All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Garrett Wilhelm. I'm the president. And this is Quincy Dornaball, our vice president of the American Society of Civil Engineers over at USF. Um, I guess first off, civil engineers were responsible for all the infrastructure that keeps civilization running, talking roads, water, uh, to some degree power distribution. Yeah. Bridges, towns. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff that keeps us going, that's what we're involved in over here. As a professional organization, we help uh, college students coming in and getting involved in the world of civil engineering. Uh, we help their resumes, we get them in touch with uh, full-time positions, and our yearly competition at our conference has a wide range of uh, cool engineering challenges that we take on. And I guess first and foremost among those is our concrete canoe competition, where it seems uh, kind of counterintuitive that a canoe would be made out of concrete. Yeah. <laughs> this concrete's heavy, you know, you walk on it, that's anything that would form a sidewalk, so that like stone material. But since it's hollow, we can create so much buoyancy that it floats. And basically it's our team's job to uh, design and then actually build the canoe and then take it to competition and race it a bunch of, against a bunch of other schools. Cool. Yeah. Yes, Quincy so, knows more about that. Yeah, sadly we haven't been able to do it for the past two years now because of COVID and everything, but hopefully next year we'll, we'll be able to get out there. But here I have a few um, actually mixed designs that we made last year. As you can see, these are these are uh, solid, solid blocks of concrete. But if I were to put this into water, it would actually float. So we basically take this design and turn it into a whole canoe. So this is kind of the one of the smaller canoes that we made as a sample. But we take this and turn this into about like a 20 foot canoe. So basically the whole process, I actually have a slideshow for it. The whole process, I'll show you guys some pictures. If you have any questions, just feel free to cut me off at any time and I'll be able to answer that for you. So give me one second. Let me know if you guys are able to see this. Uh, I don't know if this is showing up for you guys. Yeah, we can see it. We okay. Can. Yeah, it's good. Okay. So uh, this is the first thing we start off in, actually. This is the, the whole design phase of the concrete canoe. So we go into a system called Bentley, where we create this. And this is, we have to be very careful when creating this, because any small little one inch, two inch um, offset can really mess up the whole canoe. So we go in there and get the exact designs and everything. Um, canoes are actually surprisingly very difficult to design because there's a lot of different aspects of the canoe that can be changed, that can change how um, it, it reacts in water. So the effects of drag and everything that it has in water, any little thing can really change um, the, uh, the performance of the canoe. So if we go into this next picture, this is actually the what we use to create the canoe. This is about 20 foot long. This is like 20 foot long uh, styrofoams put together. We use styrofoam because it's a cheaper method, but other schools do use methods such as uh, like a wood molding, or if they do have money, I know a lot of schools like the University of Florida, they do have a lot of money backing them in a competition like this. So they do use a wood mold, but it's all on preference. And this is actually, so we take that first picture that you guys saw and turn it into reality. So this is the same exact um, uh, specs that you saw in the first picture and this picture right here. So what we do, we use a, um, we use a wire cutter to cut these out perfectly, and then we uh, glue it all together. 
So this is actually the molding that we use to create the concrete canoe. So if we go next, um, the next thing we have to do to create the canoe is actually make a, a epoxy mold. So this epoxy mold you see that we're pouring here, it fills up all the little holes that are in the styrofoam that we may have caused. So it, it allows the inside of the canoe to be as smooth as possible. Because as you may know, we want to reduce drag as much as possible. So we put this in there. And next slide. Yeah, this is again just us, just all painting it out. It takes about a week for the whole um, mold, this epoxy mold to set. So after a week, that's when we actually start the design, the, the build of the canoe. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this little small, um, these little small imperfections in the in the mold, but that's what basically what the epoxy is there for to fill all these things up. So next, yeah, just more. This is the whole completed thing, and then we'll cover it and then come back in a week. So this is the actual construction of the canoe. So this is all, all you see here is concrete. Um, this is a specific design we had. They do give us uh, specifications on what they want in the design. So the water to cement ratio, what percentage of aggregates and cementitious materials that they want in the canoe for that specific year. So once we have the design, that's when we start the creation. And the canoe actually shows up black here because we do have pigment powders that we put into the canoes to um, turn it into a color that we want, just to give it a nice appearance. So we'll we'll put this, um, we'll lay this concrete throughout the whole twenty foot section. So it's a if you if you guys would imagine, it's a lot of concrete that we need to create this. So this is the whole thing. This is actually the second layer put down. This is a middle layer, the middle layer. And we lay rods because if you don't know, concrete is terrible in tension. So any type of tension that occurs in this canoe will be uh, dealt with by these rods. If these rods were not in the canoe, it would actually snap right in half due to the tension of if somebody was sitting in this middle layer, it would probably just snap into due to the tension. And we also have a mesh as well to help with the tension as well. But uh, it can't be seen here because we already laid it through the first and second layer. So, And then these are actually the designs that we put into the canoe. So we cut out, we um, before we already knew what we wanted to do. So we actually cut these out in styrofoam and then we worked around it to get the design we want. So at the end, You'll see it actually looks very, very nice. But this is the last layer that goes on top. Um, I believe the canoe weighs surprisingly with all this, um, with all this canoe, uh, with all this concrete. Does anybody imagine how how heavy it is? Does anybody have a guess? No guesses. All right, I'll just spoil it. Um, it's around surprisingly, it's only around two hundred pounds or like two or five. I actually weigh more than this twenty foot canoe, so that's actually kind of crazy when you think about it. That this concrete canoe is um only around two hundred pounds. Um, there there are lighter canoes, I believe. You 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 have to one one ninety. 198, they got down there, right? Yeah, they got down there, but... um. They certainly can, and they've been as heavy over here. So what's that other one out there, like 350, yeah, 400? 350, yeah, be. I think that one's like 350. So your mixed design and, you know, what uh, aggregates, like what kind of pieces of stone and different uh, powdered mixes you put in that we were showing here really affects yeah. how much uh, force the concrete can take and also how light it is. Yeah, and it's always a fine balance. Yeah, because that's, yeah. if it's heavier, you can get it stronger, but it's just not practical, and it might not be as easy to move through the water. But if yeah. it's too light, it might be brittle. Yeah, it might snap right into. Yeah. So you have to be really careful. I know China. Um, China also has this competition. Their first canoe weighed around five hundred pounds, 
Yeah, yeah it's an so. easy mistake to make before you actually have to lift it. I yeah, think. yeah, I think their walls are like three, four inches thick. So it's a it's a very very um, interesting process. So this is the final uh, interior design of the canoe. I believe they look nice. I think we did a great job. This is supposed to be the world on the inside there. I think it was pretty cool. It was a World Olympics theme. Yeah, so. World Olympics. Each every year there's a theme to the competition, so we kind of have to follow that theme, and we kind of named the um, named the canoe after the competition. So this one was global. Last year was sea bull. So we always try to throw a bull at the end of everything because you know we're the University of South Florida Bulls. But this is actually the sanding down of the exterior. So again, uh, in the water, we want um, the least amount of drag as possible. So we actually smooth down this bottom surface as smooth as possible so we can go as fast as possible. The whole competition is to be fast, but also to have the, um, the best canoe possible. So I think it took us about like 10 or 12 hours of just purely sanding to get this whole bottom and outside layer um, as smooth as possible. And a lot of um, like why the smoothness is important in the first place, when you think about Newton's first law, it's that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. You can think of it like a piece of paper. Like if the, if the canoe is really jagged and has all these pieces sticking off, it's like that paper being flat trying to go against the wind. Like the wind's gonna have all this area to push back on it. And that's yeah. what the water would be doing on the canoe. But when it's smooth, it's like you crumple it up into a, you know, a little ball, so it's taking up less space, and it's got that arrow or water, like we call it dynamics, so that it moves smoothly through the surface and doesn't get much uh, pushback from the water. Yeah. And that would be fighting against us when we were trying to row it. Exactly, perfectly said. So this is actually the final design of the canoe. So these these flags on the outside are actually also made of um, a cement mix, a different cement mix. Um, one of the requirements is that anything that is on the canoe has to be concrete. So we actually had to figure out uh, another mix to get these flags to show up um, on on the side of the canoe. And I feel like um, it came out pretty nice. Um, how these flags, you have flags on this side and the other side as well. Again, the the competition, the, the theme was the Olympics, so we kind of wanted to have um, flags of different countries on the side. We thought it would be pretty cool. And yeah, you have the name here, University of South Florida. So I think this, this came out really, really nice um, at the end of everything. And it's worth noting, you know, we're the American Society of Civil Engineers, but we're an international organization. Yeah. Even in our competition, we have teams from Puerto Rico and China come over, but we also have uh, teams in India, there's a few in Europe. I know several African countries now have active ASCE chapters. So, yeah. so it's a global, internationally minded engineering organization. So yeah. Everyone's welcome. And we want to be a, a big standard setter for the world, like making sure everything's built safely and yeah. you know, civilization keeps going forward. Yeah, a lot of the standards are created by ASCE that is are used in um, the real world um, design. So, yeah, this is another picture. This is the pre. So these are all the um, these are all the templates that we use to put on the side, and then we paint over it and then take the templates off. So, and this is the final thing. So as you can see, it actually is in water. This. 20 foot, 200 pound canoe. It does fit four people. So the competition is a women's four by four, a men's four by four, and a co ed four by four, and the two by twos as well men's two by two, and women's two by two. So um, not only do we have to create the canoe, but we also have to practice. So I don't know if you guys ever went paddling in a canoe. But it is a lot, a lot, a lot of work um, on the core and on your arms. So if you can imagine, like after this whole thing, you just have like giant arms and just a six pack after everything with the amount of uh, paddling that we have to do. This is actually at Riverfront as well. So what we did, this is called the Swamp Test. 
where we actually fill up the whole thing with water to see um, if it will sink to the bottom of the uh, river. So one of the requirements in order to compete is that um, if you do um, if you do sink, and it does happen a lot, if you do sink, that the canoe doesn't sink to the bottom. Because if you can imagine, they do not want, they don't want any uh, of these concrete canoes just sitting at the bottom of lakes in different uh, states because we had a competition there. So it is a requirement um, that these things float if it does sink, um, if water does get in. That's what these, I forgot what they're called, but we add these styrofoam layers at the end, they help with the buoyancy as well if it sinks down. Yeah. Think about like um, why buoyancy works the way that it does. For instance, if the canoe is filled with air, you know, it's empty, then you've got water on the outside and all of the water is actually pushing up against the bottom of the canoe. But if you had water inside, that water would be heavy and the force of gravity would be pulling down. So you can think about it all in terms of forces and that's kind of the foundation of physics that makes all of the canoe uh, stuff work in terms of it floating. So when we're filling it with water, we're pushing it to the highest level of stress that that canoe could be expected yeah. to experience with those counteracting forces. And as long as it still manages to rise up, it's a qualified design. Right. Yep. So everything comes down to forces and science. And then this is them actually practicing in a canoe. So what is this? 150 to Another 150. I don't know. This is around like 500 pounds in the canoe, if you can guess. So, yeah, this is them practicing um, in the canoe. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get to participate in the 2020 um, conference due to COVID. That's right when COVID hit. So, I think they shut down the campus. It was supposed to be at the University of Central Florida, but they shut down the campus the day we got there. So we did not get to compete in this canoe, but we do still have this one and the 2019 one. We do like to hold the canoes just as um, a showcase, but uh, hopefully we're able to get out there next year, uh, COVID willing to participate in next year's concrete canoe. Yeah, so that really highlights, uh, you know, the values of the engineering community. You know, it's all it's all about public health and safety, but also the health and safety of the engineers and any workers involved. You know, human life is always the priority of an ethically minded engineering society. Yeah, yeah and I think that's safety. First. That's a very important thing. Just be as safe as possible. So if anybody has any questions, that's the end of my presentation. If anybody has any questions for me or for Garrett, uh, please feel free to let us know. Nothing here. I don't know if it's raining outside. I did want to show you guys the actual canoe. Let me go check the weather. And yeah, it's but, still yeah, I'm not sure. It was starting to, to rain a little bit and we do keep the, the canoe outside. So Hopefully it isn't too bad. Um, he's checking right now. Give us one second. I do have it on my phone. Oh, if you can do it on the phone, it's yeah. like a sprinkle. It's a sprinkle? Yeah. Yeah, I'm willing. Yeah, I have it on my phone. Okay, so we can show you guys uh, the actual life-size version of the canoe. Yeah, I can show you guys it real quick. Let me switch to my phone so we can go outside. And... Yeah, I know uh, something else we kind of glossed over just in terms of uh, the physics of the materials. You know, when he was talking about uh, concrete as a building material, there's uh, two types of forces that the concrete would experience. And that's a uh, compression. You know, you think of like pushing something together and then there's tension and that's pulling something apart. And what's interesting about different materials is that they react to those forces totally differently. So if you look at concrete as like a sidewalk or a road, it's really good at taking compressive forces pushing down on it. But also you see that same concrete sidewalk and it'll have cracks in it. 
and that's actually the heating and cooling. It tends to pull apart as it's heating and expanding, and because the concrete's so weak to that pulling, it'll react yeah, totally differently. Right. Yeah, those are all. That's for all the kids that are gonna watch this and yeah. become civil engineering so, uh, students soon. Uh, the questions in the chat. Um, how well has USF performed in a competition in the past? So we're actually one of the top teams in Florida. We usually don't, uh, we don't place lower than third place or fourth place. I'd say four, fourth, fourth and up. And we're talking 26, 27 schools competing. Yeah. So. And you have to imagine, uh, UF, the University of Florida is one of the top teams in the nation. They actually place first in the nation last year, I believe. And so we're competing with teams that are extremely good. So when we have to, when we say we have to bring our A game every single year, we have to bring our A game. Uh, we say UF is our rivals because we always uh, kind of place under them. And we also place under Puerto Rico as well. We uh, compete with Puerto Rico as well. And they have a really good um, civil engineering program over there as well in San Juan. So yeah, um, but we are one of the top teams in Florida, at least. Uh, and um, we are trying to make it to that next level and actually make it to nationals. Because nationals is another competition where all the teams that place first and second in their respective regions go to a specific location. So let's say Wisconsin or Nebraska or wherever it is, uh, we all fly our canoes out and we all go and compete at that competition for the national title of a concrete canoe. So it's a it's a pretty cool experience. Um, how many competitors are usually in a competition? So um, it depends on which competition it is. For concrete canoe, there's, uh, I believe, four different races. So you do have a woman's two by two. You have a men's two by two. You have and you have a co-ed. Yeah, so I believe it's three. And there's different um, when you go out there, there's actually different tracks. So you do actually have a sprint up and back. I believe it's 100 meters up and back. And you have a slalom where you have to go through these cones and then come all the way around and then come back. That's more of the endurance part of the uh, competition. So um, it is a very taxing competition. Um, at the end of the day, everybody's gassed, everybody's muscles hurt after that whole thing, but it is a very rewarding uh, competition. But at that competition, at um, the regionals, there are different other competitions like geo wall and surveying and some other things. Yeah, there's a few professional papers and research topics. Uh, they had to make water filters just out of two liter bottles and sand and charcoal, which is something that can filter out a lot of uh, contaminants that you might experience from just any water. You yeah. get your phone video off. Yeah, so any any type of um, civil engineering thing you can think of, uh, we do at competition. It's a really fun experience. So let's actually uh, show you the uh, canoe. Yeah, but in terms of total numbers, um, in the Southeast Regional Competition, there's anywhere between 20 and 28 schools. You're looking at uh, colleges that have a big engineering program. And like Quincy said, there's anywhere from 10 to 20 different teams and events going on all in the same weekend. So, you know, one person might be running just the engineering gauntlet. And that's a really exciting time for everyone. You know, the en energy's high. You know, you'll be like, oh, I'm building a wall out of earth and reinforcing it over here. But then in like two hours, I got to run this way and present a paper I wrote. So it's. Oh, we actually do have that video competition, right? Yeah. Do you want to yeah. put it? You want to show them real quick? I mean, do you have it loaded up? I do not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know how we get that. Quickly. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Yeah. Okay, let's right. just show them the canoe. Yeah. All right. Let me switch over. All right. Transfer now. We're gonna go a little first person here. Um. Do you want to see any of the uh, aggregates in the workshop? Yeah. Let me show them right here. So, this is actually our workshop. Oh, how do you flip this? Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is actually our workshop. So, it's not only us 
um, we have our portion over here. I guess it's going to turn into a lab. A lab. Uh, thing. I forgot. Um, this is, um, they actually built their, they don't like when I call it a go-kart, but I do like calling it a go-kart. They built their go-karts in here as well. But um, our portion of the lab is over here. We do, in that picture you did see the canoe here. So we do everything from here. This is where we keep all our material and we do need to buy more material, but this is where all of our symmetric materials and um, concrete. This is one, this is like a slag. Everything does look the same. So you have to be very careful when uh, doing this mix design. Um, but yeah, this is, that's Medicaid, right? but no, that's PC. This is all that's, different minerals and salts. And, that's silica fuel. Yeah. Yeah, no, so see. silicate, slag usually comes from uh, industrial processes like uh, making metals. Yeah, you want to pop this open real quick. Yeah, we actually do keep the canoe outside. Uh, no, it's not locked. Um, it should just pop open. No. Ah, hold on. Or something. Oh, is it latched? Uh, did they lock it because of COVID? Yeah, I think it's locked. Oh, uh, they locked it because of COVID. All right. Yeah, uh, we're dealing with a lot of new uh, restrictions around here. Here's yeah. actually the geo wall oh, box. Yeah. So, like, uh, for instance, you don't think of earth as a very strong material and you play with sand or something. But as long as you keep it from sliding out the sides, earth is incredibly strong. And a lot of uh, highway overpasses. Obviously, uh, not the span of the bridge, but the actual like ramp up is all earth underneath. It's just held in place. So this is a competition where you compact a bunch of earth in here, and then it opens up, and it has to support itself against different forces. Because that's a big part of engineering, once again, is just being able to resist natural forces. And it goes back to Newton's first law. A reaction is an equal and opposite reaction. You, know, you push down, you're displacing everything, and it wants to go away. Yeah. So lots of different projects going on. So here. Parker, where's the lab located on campus? So the lab is actually over. I think you can answer this question better than me. Um, it's over. It's in, by the water tower. Yeah. It's uh, right behind the transportation facilities, so like where you pay for parking. Yeah. So parking wherever the bus parking is. The building right next to it is where um, this lab is located. But yeah, uh, usually before COVID, um, it is open. So if you ever want to study, you could come here and study. We do have a little office here where we just work. We have a coffee machine and a fridge in there. So it is a pretty cool spot to um, come. So I, I think mean, here's even more research just on yeah, this, our way. You know, you see a lot of uh, big concrete stuff. This is what would hold up a bridge that cars would drive over. And you see, once again, there's always a metal inside of it that's holding the concrete together. They're actually looking at corrosion, which is basically exposure to the environment and the material wears away. Like you think rust or, you know, just things get old, they start to crumble. They're actually experimenting on a lot of that. Yeah. So this is actually the twenty, the twenty nineteen canoe. Um. So this canoe, I believe, was nineteen point seven feet. Um. This is all concrete again. It is pretty old. Um. But we do keep the uh, new canoe in our trailer there. Um. So I don't know if we can show them the new canoe real quick. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let's just get some scale on this. Like, for instance, I'm six feet seven. Yeah, so, I'm a, I'm a big guy. Yeah, so he's, yeah, he's about six seven. Yeah. And so I'm he. Like two meters long. What? Two meters. <laughs> two meters. Like an eight meter. Six to eight meter. Yeah, six to eight meter thing. So, yeah, this is a very, a very big project and it's very hands on. This is also very helpful when you're um talking about talking with like in an interview you can always bring this up um this is something that can relate to um a project in the field as well so it is like if if you were in college i would suggest uh joining country canoe but it's it is a very uh, rewarding experience so you wanna yeah hands on so 
you know, if you like tools or you want to learn how to use them, that's the thing. Really, you can always come and learn. It's not something everybody shows up and they just magically understand how to create these courses all of a sudden. So we're all depending on people who have done it before to teach us and we carry on the tradition. Yeah, I don't know how well the audio is. I know you are outside and I am on my phone. So I apologize if the audio is going in and out. Yeah, so this this is the trailer that we do take to competition. We drive this anywhere and everywhere. I believe this is Mullen's trailer, right? Um, I think that's accurate. So it belongs to one of the professors. Yeah. Same uh, combo here is there, right? Eh? No, nah, it was. I'm not sure. Wasn't it? No, I believe it was the. Uh... I believe it was the. Uh... Yeah. Not a hundred percent too sure. Sorry, we're running into a little bit difficulties here. Probably. Uh... This one might be an issue. Oh, okay. Well, we forgot the code to the uh, trailer, so I it's apologize. Another concrete canoe. Yeah, it's, a, it's the, the newest one is in here. We don't want this one getting dirty, so we leave that one out there. So Here's another insight into uh, concrete design right here. That's just, yeah, that's just all extra. Yeah, but you see this, like, uh, you ever see utility poles with lights, anything like that? You see the concrete outside but what's in it once again yeah. a metal beam supporting it and all the tensile forces holding it all together so that's you know concrete and metal go hand in hand yeah. and that's a big part of the construction yeah so as you may know in, in civil it's a lot of concrete so you got to learn to love concrete when you're a civil engineering major but um yeah that's that's pretty much it for us if you guys have any questions any more questions, feel free to, to throw them in the chat. But if not, I believe that would be the end of our presentation. I'll give you guys a minute if you have any more questions. So, uh, uh, nothing's, nothing's coming in. So yeah, that's pretty much it for us. Um, water tower is right here. So if you want to know where the shop is. Yeah, so if you want to know where this shop is, just find a water tower on campus and just follow the water tower and it'll lead you to, to the uh, shop if you ever want to come by. But yeah, that's pretty much it for us. If you guys don't have any more questions, I think, um, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate everyone for stopping by and having a little chat. So thank you again for everything and you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. All right. Pretty much it.